Hello, I'm Blisnub, and welcome to Building the Best. Today we're going to be looking at the comb, because I was covering it in a stream earlier today, and came up with a very interesting build, which I thought I wanted to share with you fine gentlemen. Now, uh, the comb is a very, very strange shotgun, in that it spools up like a machine gun does, and when it spools up, not only does it fire a its fire rate increases, you would expect, but the number of pellets it fires increases, and the amount of ammunition it consumes also increases, and on top of that, the spread increases, meaning that point blank, a rapid spool up on this weapon would be insane at just blitzing through enemies, but that's not really my playstyle, and honestly, I wanted to find something different and unique to do with this weapon, and I believe I have. Now, looking at its base stats, you can see that apart from this, ba this massive base magazine and the absolutely insane thousand rounds of ammo capacity the weapon has, um, it also has a very fast reload, a reasonable base fire rate, very, very high base status chance, and a majority of slash damage. And all of these are very, very useful things, because of course this magazine is only so large because we're going to be going through it lovely and quickly. So I'd say this mag size is about right for the weapon, but the rest of the stats are what we are going to thoroughly abuse. Now if you come over to my B page, we can see my thorough abusement? I don't know, whatever. Anyhow, so we start off with base damage, obviously primed point blank, Hell's Chamber for the multi-shot, and Blaze for damage and heat, and you really, really can't uh, overestimate the usefulness of Blaze on any build. We then have Shotgun Spaz for fire rate to spool up the weapon faster, Frigid Blast and Toxic Barrage for viral damage and a little bit of status chance, Contagious Spread so that our viral damage has a higher weighting, well, almost a higher weighting than our slash damage, so we'll see viral procs about as often as we'll see slash procs. And finally, Tainted Shell, a very strange mod that honestly I have not found many uses for, but it works very well on the comb because it slows down our fire rate so that we don't churn through ammo ridiculously fast, and it also increases our spread ridiculously so, sorry, decreases our spread. It makes the weapon a lot more accurate, meaning that even when fully spooled up, this weapon is still point accurate at 100 meters and is insanely good. And just before I demonstrate this on some enemies, I will demonstrate that on uh, stationary targets so you can see. But before I do that, I should explain, as shotguns do calculate uh, status chance differently, this 83% status chance is a little misleading. If we drop off the Hell's Chamber, we can see we're actually getting 55% base status chance. But again, that's also misleading. Pardon me. Now, that 55% status chance applies on the first shot, because the first shot out of the comb is actually calculated as though it were a rifle. The comb only fires one pellet without any multi-shot mods. And so it has 55% status chance on the first shot, 33% on the second, this is obviously per pellet, 23% uh, on the third, 18% on the fourth, and 15% status chance when it's fully spooled up and is firing five times as much, as many pellets as it normally would be. And bear in mind Hell's Chamber multiplies this, that basically means that the weapon's status chance never actually changes, but it just gets, but the amount of pellets increases and the status chance per pellet goes down quite drastically as the weapon spools up. Now, this actually means that, seeing as the weapon has a nate punch through, if you're aiming at crowds, it's quite useful for spreading lots and lots of status procs throughout the crowd, but you do have to bear in mind that each shot has a dilute... each pellet, sorry, is a diluted status chance based on the entire shot. So, it's a little confusing, but simply put, the very first shot has massive status chance, and when fully spooled up, the weapon doesn't quite have as much status chance but it will still have the same effect on an enemy, just with lots and lots of pellets dealing lots and lots of damage. I, that was really confusing, I appreciate. But anyhow, um, this weapon is pumping out about 700 damage, mostly in slash, heat, and viral, which is delightful because it means lots and lots of slash and viral procs, and as you can imagine, halving an enemy's health and then dealing pure health damage to him, ignoring shields and armor, is pretty good as far as procs go. 
But the slash damage itself obviously does not ignore shields and armor. But anyhow, I've witted on about this far too long. Let's go demonstrate this thing. And very quickly, I'm going to show, because this weapon's damage falloff starts at 15 meters, which is to say that up to 15 meters, this weapon's damage is constant and full. But after that, it will fall off ever so slightly over distance. So this pillar is about 15 meters away, and I just want to show, as it spools up, the accuracy difference. And as you can see, the first one or two pellets, and then fully spooled up, it's pretty damn accurate. So, yeah, sniper, shotgun, machine gun, I think is what we're rolling with here. So I'm going to spawn in some uh, level 80 Grenier to test this weapon out. And bear in mind, I can easily hit them at this range with the weapon, but I am getting a little bit of, that, of damage fall off, so I'm going to want to go a bit closer. And, um, for instance, this is about 15 meters, which is about the range, honestly, that I find myself normally coming into contact with enemies and trying to take them out. We can see it is absolutely shredding through these Grenier. Alloy armor or ferrite armor be damned. Viral and slash procs together make short work of either. Now it's going to take a little longer on the bombards, but thanks to the punch through, the spool up, and the sheer quantity of procs we're getting, it really doesn't matter too much. We just lay into them, focus on the headshots, because this weapon is, of course, sniper accurate, and mulch through them. And this weapon is absolutely brutal on pretty much anything you point it at. Bear in mind that when you shoot a nullifier, pretty much two or three shots will be enough to get rid of the nullifier's bubble. Because you shoot it once, that counts as one shot. But if you hold down the trigger just a little bit, that's counting as many, many, many shots. And nullifier's bubbles go down after a set amount of shots. Not a set amount of damage. Or amount of pellets. Actually, it might be... No, it isn't an amount of pellets, because shotguns um, applies only a single shot. But the comb functions just a little differently to that rule. And I'm gonna, gonna just demonstrate that, because I have confused myself mildly. So let's get rid of all the grenier, because they would, of course, kill the nullifier. And let's find ourselves a delightful nullifier to show you. So here we go, nullifier crewman. Let's have 20 of them, because why not? And... I appear to be invisible. There we go. Okay. So we can see... Spool up just a little. And... That nullifier's bubble is just gone. Each shot only counts as one, but the weapon's spool up is ridiculously fast. Meaning that it will melt through nullifier bubbles, and it will melt through practically any corpus near instantly. This weapon is truly horrifying against enemies without armor, and you've already seen how it is against enemies with armor. So, yeah, it's only dealing about 700 damage, but this weapon, honestly, is an insane amount of fun, and will deal with sortie level enemies with ease. Absolute ease. So, anyhow, this has been very interesting. And I do love covering these strange weapons. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope you found it useful. Um, as always, please like and comment below, and subscribe if you want to see more. I'm Bliznub, and this is The Comb.